Hi, and welcome to Tuba Mina Teaching. My name is Chris Jacobs, and today we'll be doing Term 1, Lesson 1 on Whole Numbers. This is my contribution to Tuba Mina Teaching. In this lesson, we'll be looking at whole numbers, more specifically, the properties of whole numbers, and we'll be focusing a bit more on whole numbers, namely prime numbers. When we speak about the properties of whole numbers, we refer to its laws, namely the commutative law and the associative law. These laws only apply to multiplication and addition of whole numbers. Let's start off with the commutative law. With the commutative law, it states that when adding or multiplying, the order in which we add or multiply does not matter. What does this mean? For example, if we say 3 plus 5, it is the same as saying 5 plus 3. Or, if we say 4 multiplied by 3, it is the same as saying 3 multiplied by 4. Does this only work for two numbers? No, it doesn't. Let's say, for example, we have 2 times 3 times 5. It is the same as saying 3 times 5 times 2, or 5 times 2 times 3. Let's break it down just a little bit. 2 times 3 is 6, multiplied by 5 gives us 30. If we change it around and we say 3 times 5, 3 times 5 is 15, multiplied by 2 gives us 30. Or even better, if we say 5 multiplied by 2, that's 10, and 10 multiplied by 3 is 30. So it doesn't matter in which order we multiply, we will always come up to the same result. And this is the commutative law. When we speak about the associative law, we basically think of the word association. An association means who you hang out with. The same concept or idea can be applied to mathematics. For example, if I have 3 plus 5 plus 2, it is the same as saying 5 plus 3 plus 2. Now, even though it may sound the same, Mathematically, they're slightly different. Let's show you how. 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 2 gives us 10. However, if we had to group the 3 and the 2 together, we'd have 5 plus 3 plus 2, in other words, 5 plus 5 to give us 10. Once again, we see that the order doesn't matter, as long as we group them together. This is the associative law. Grouping numbers together. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we have multiplication, and we want to apply the associative law to this. In other words, we have 4 times 5 times 3, and we're going to group together the 4 and the 5. So in other words, 4 times 5 gives us 20, and 20 multiplied by 3 gives us 60. Now, what happens if we had to group the 5 and the 3 together? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 multiplied by 4 gives us 60. So again, it doesn't matter which of these numbers we group together, as long as the operation remains the same. Let's take a look at the last example. In this example, we have 7 plus 3 grouped together, plus 2. 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, plus 2 gives us an answer of 12. If we had to group the 3 and the 2 together, however, we would have 7 plus 3 plus 2. So 3 plus 2 gives us 5, and 7 plus 5 gives us 12. And so this is a great example of the associative law being applied to addition. Why would it be important to know the commutative law as well as the associative law? Well, in each case, each one can be applied to whole numbers to make the operation slightly easier. For example, if I have 97 plus 5, we could break it up into 97 plus 3 plus 2. So, in this case, what we could then say is 97 plus 3 is 100 plus 2 is 102. So the associative law or the commutative law is applied to whole numbers to make any operation easier. We get up to the second part of this lesson, speaking about prime numbers. Now what are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that is only divisible by itself and one. Hmm, that seems quite interesting. Well, what if a number could be divided by more than just itself and one? Those numbers are called composite numbers, and composite numbers have what we call many factors. 
Factors are the building blocks of numbers. Factors are what make up any number. So, if we had to define prime numbers by mentioning factors, prime numbers only has two factors, itself and one, whereas composite numbers have multiple factors. Now, you're probably sitting there and thinking, but Chris, what about zero and one? Zero can be divided by itself and and one can be divided by itself and it's one. So what happens to these numbers? In these cases, zero and one do not belong to prime numbers or to composite numbers. Zero and one are what we call universal numbers. Universal numbers do not belong to any specific group, but rather belongs to an overarching set of numbers which govern all other numbers. So namely, zero and one are universal. How do we identify prime numbers? Well, it's quite difficult to think out of your head of a number that could just be divisible by itself and one. So it might be easier to learn it or to even know how we can calculate it or to know how we can find it off a number table. So let's look at this example. This example says find all the prime numbers between one and 30. Hmm, seems like quite a task, but it's a lot easier than what you think. So let's take a look. Here we have a grid numbered 1 all the way through to 30. In this case, we want to find all the prime numbers between 1 and 30. Then, the first thing we do is we scratch out any universal numbers. What do we mean? We scratch out 0 and 1. Next, we move on to the next number, 2. We do not scratch out 2, but rather we scratch out every multiple of 2. So we scratch out 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. Next, we move on to the number 3. We leave the 3 alone, but we scratch out every multiple of 3. So, we scratch out 6, which is already scratched out because of the 2, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27, and 30. Now that we've scratched out all of those numbers, we move on to the next number. 4 is not available because we scratched that one out already with the 2s, so we move on to 5. And we scratch out all the multiples of 5. So we've already scratched out 10, we scratch out 15 when it came to the 3s, we scratch out 20 when it came to the 2s, and now we get to scratch out 25. Now that we have scratched out all the multiples of 5, let's go on to 7. 7 we leave alone, but we scratch out all the multiples of 7. So we scratch out 14, 21, and 28. All of the other numbers that we can go on do not have any other multiples. For example, 11's multiple is 22, which is scratched out already, and 33 is outside of 30. We can try the same thing with 13. 13 we leave alone, but we scratch out the multiples of 13. So 26 is already scratched out, and 39 is the last one that's left. However, it's outside of our zone. We can try the same thing with 14, 19, 23, and 29. But each of these are the only numbers left. And if you look at them, they are only divisible by itself and 1. If you take any of these numbers and you try to divide them by 2, you will always be left with a remainder or a decimal. And so we know that these numbers that are left now are prime numbers. So, to recall all the prime numbers between 1 and 30, we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. These are all your prime numbers between 1 and 30. All the numbers that are scratched out except for 1, all of those other numbers are composite numbers. 1, however, is a universal number, so it stands alone by itself. So, to recap and conclude this lesson, whole numbers obey the commutative law and the associative law under addition and multiplication. In other words, when we add or we multiply, the order in which we add or multiply does not matter, as long as we only apply one of these operations. We also found that prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by itself and by 1 without giving any remainder. If a number can be divided by more than just one number, as in it can be divided by 2, 
three, six, four, anything else, those numbers are considered as composite numbers. Thanks for watching this lesson. I really hope it's helped and gives you a nice great head start into the new year. Thank you. Thank you.